I mean, if you have the shortest arms ever, you're gonna be the worst vlogger ever. Who even vlogs anymore? breakdown of all the lenses that I have. I believe we have the Tamron 17 to 28 millimeter 2.8. We have the Tamron 20 to 40 millimeter 2.8. The Sony APS-C lens 11 millimeters. The Sony 20 millimeters 1.8 G lens and a Samyang 18 millimeters at 2.8 to put on the ZV-E1, walking test mainly. So I'm not gonna test out anything else. All image quality is pretty good on all the lenses, but we're looking mainly for the stabilization, walking, talking, moving headshots. So this is the 17 to 28 Tamron. This is no steady shot whatsoever. We'll see how this does. I'm gonna try to keep the variables the same. I'm outside kind of walking at my normal pace try not to trip on all these vines I got out here but you can see how this is whenever I do not have steady shot on this is active steady shot with a 17 to 28 I'm still walking the same path going at my normal speed so wonder if you can I can feel like this is better more this is more stabilized than the last one obviously so act is pretty good on this and it gives me pretty wide so we'll go to dynamic next here's dynamic steady shot on the 17 to 28 of course it's cropped in more which is perfectly fine in this case so this is kind of my preferred method of how to shoot with this so we'll see how this one will look should look more stable okay this is the sam yang no steady shot on i had to bump up the aperture on this one to about eight the rest of them are at either 2.8 or 1.0 reason is i don't have an nd filter for this one so i had to bump up that aperture no steady shot we'll see how this looks out here and how steady this one feels active steady shot on the 18 millimeter samyang like I said, I had to bump up the aperture to eight here. I'm gonna keep walking on the same ground. Tried to hold the camera as still as possible. And it's doing pretty good here. So here is the Samyang 18 millimeters with dynamic active steady shot. Granted, this lens is probably going to be one of the lighter, which makes it convenient. It's shorter, so shorter lighter easy to back around but only as 18 millimeters dynamic active steady shot here is the tamron 20 to 40 millimeters 2.8 no steady shot on Let's see how this does so this is at the focal length of 20. now one thing i don't like about this lens is you have to actually zoom out in the physical lens to get it to 20. 40 is actually the smaller one so just note that this is active stay shot on the 20 to 40 now in comparison to lightness and compactness this would probably be number three either three or four in the compact of the lenses that i'm testing now so it would be the third lightest i'll put the numbers up there here is dynamic active steady shot on the Tamron 20 to 40 so this is likely going to be around the same as my Sony 20 millimeters at 1.8 but this one's at 2.8 which is just as good and obviously a good price for this plus you can zoom out a little more okay this is the 11 millimeter this is not zoomed in no steady shot at all I'm gonna to have to zoom in a little bit to get rid of that vignetting so that's about what 25% zoomed in right there so this is an APS-C lens 
it's very light and compact this is i believe going to be the lightest and compact version of it but remember you got to zoom in on each one of these so you may forget you may get some vignetting but it's also the lightest here's active stage shot you can see the vignetting here so i will zoom in a little bit more so there you go and you can still use clear image zoom on active steady shot you cannot use clear image zoom on dynamic steady shot no matter how hard i try no matter what i look at even sony's website says you can't use clear image zoom on dynamic but you can in active so it shouldn't distort anything here but still gives us a very good wide angle and last but not least this is the dynamic active on the 11 millimeter if you can see if i just move around a little bit you'll probably see a little bit of vignetting so i zoom in just a little bit like barely touch the zoom dial and this is dynamic active on the 11 millimeter 1.8 aps-c lens it actually works really really well i already had this for my zve 10 it works great on there so this is a great lens to have in any scenario so no complaints except for you have to zoom in every time you turn the camera on if you leave the camera on then it's okay but sometimes you'll forget and then you get that vignetting then you have to fix that in post and here is my 20 millimeter 1.8 g lens from sony it is at no steady shot so usually the native lenses actually do a lot better from Sony on Sony cameras, obviously, but obviously they are more expensive. So you got to take that in consideration. This is active steady shot with my 20 millimeter 1.8 lens from Sony. Um, another good thing about this lens is it's quite large, so you can hold it by the lens, which is convenient sometimes and it has a little custom button that I can just use to hit the button to end and start recording and this is dynamic active on the 20 this is obviously punched in a lot more than I probably like but it still works very very well in dynamic active um, this lens does is kind of longer too so it's kind of annoying because it throws off the center of gravity but this is kind of my go-to lens for most things in low light, especially. But overall, great lens. This is for shits and giggles. I have my iPhone 13 Pro Max. Uh, see how stable this footage is. Same walking territory. Man, this is punched in quite a bit. Uh, it feels really shaky and wobbly already, just holding it like this. So um, probably not the best, but it's got a really good aperture in cinematic mode. Pros and cons of the 17 to 28 2.8 Tamron lens. The uh, reason I picked Tamron mainly is because the filter thread is 67 millimeters, so all my NDs will fit on this along with my uh, already purchased 20 millimeter Sony lens. So the pros of this one is it's actually quite compact. It does not weigh that much. It's a little longer than the 20 millimeters. And it's slightly heavier, but you do get that 17 millimeter reach. Uh, the stabilization after seeing it on post is not as good as the native Sony lenses, but for the price of this, I think this is going around $900. You could probably find it used for cheaper. It is an overall great vlogging lens. The next ones are the Sigma 16 and 28 or the fancy Sony 1635, which is like two grand. So pick and choose. Um, the cons of it is that it's got a weird focal length. 17 is a little bit closer than I would like, but really good and then you don't have that longer focal length at 28. So that's my only con with that one. Pros and cons of the 20 to 40 millimeter 2.8 Tamron lens is, I think the worst con about this is whenever you're at 20 millimeters and trying to uh, vlog, it actually has to extend the barrel because when you're lower there, it's 40 millimeters, which is kind of the opposite. But I guess this is a new wave of technology. Uh, one of the 
pros of it. It does have a USB-C cable so you can update the firmware. Still got a 67 millimeter uh, filter thread for ND filters and it is very compact. It is very, very tiny. I got the lens covers on it right now, but either way, this is very a lightweight lens. This is a great lens. If I didn't have a 20 already, this would probably be in a higher category, but I would not purchase this lens just because I already have a 20 millimeter. So it kind of defeats the purpose. Now this is the sleeper of them all. This is the Sam Yang um, 18 millimeter 2.8 lens. Uh, it is so tiny. It kind of reminds me of my 11 millimeter APS-C lens from Sony. Uh, this thing is so lightweight. The filter thread here is 58. So it's kind of a weird one, but either way, it does very, very well. It's kind of in that in between that gives me two more millimeters than my 20 millimeters. So it, for the price, this thing is great. This is like what, 330 bucks? normally price or close to 400 you can, it's normally like 330 and you can pick this up i mean it's so lightweight and everything like that so the image quality is very very good it feels like plastic it doesn't feel like i'm holding anything it's full frame so you don't have to worry about that vignetting at all so it is actually the best bang for the buck here the Sony 11 millimeter 1.8 lens for APS-C cameras fits very, very well on the ZV-E1. The only problem that I have with this is the vignetting on a full frame camera. You have to put in dynamic and you have to zoom in a little bit to get rid of the vignetting. When you put it in slow-mo and you want any type of like 4K 120, it you can't get past that vignetting now if you do 60 frames per second you can zoom in and get rid of the vignetting so that's my only gripe with this lens it's got a custom button it's not very expensive i think you can get this around 500 dollars, so that's not bad it's got an auto focus manual focus switch and the filter thread on this one i believe is 55 i believe and it's super super lightweight way way lightweight favorite lens is my 20 millimeter that i have actually on this camera right now it is the 1.8 by sony g lens it retails around what 800 900 dollars you could probably find it on sale sometimes it's a great lens now it is a little heftier it does have a button filter thread on the lens of 67 my only gripe is it is a little bit longer and heavier than i want but still under 400 grams so I think I'm just complaining about it. But whenever you hold it out all the way in dynamic active steady shot, it may be just a little bit closer. That may be the end range of the dynamic that you can vlog comfortably with. If you put an active, as you've seen in this video, it's actually not very bad. It does very, very well. So if you wanna do active steady shot on here with the native Sony lens, it does extremely well. And in conclusion, which one am I gonna purchase and which one am I gonna buy? I already have the 20 millimeter and the 11. I mainly borrowed the 17, the Tamron's and the Sam Yang to test them out and see if there was anything different. If I had to pick one to buy, I would probably pick the Tamron 17 to 28 in my case, just because of that extra three millimeters of focal length. The stabilization on it's still good, but it's still not as good as Sony lenses. The value of it's really, really good. Either way, I'm gonna keep my 20. I'll probably use the 11 millimeter, just get past the vignetting just because of the compact size because I learned on our last visit to Las Vegas is compact is the way to go. So I will likely put the 11 millimeter on during the day while I'm walking around doing everything else like that, get past that vignetting, but use the 20 millimeter when we're in low light situations, sitting down, things like that, where it's not as difficult. But if you don't have the 20 or the 11, the 17 to 28 is your very good range. The Sam Yang, if you, have, if you just wanna spend money on it, it's so lightweight and you don't have the 11, I would get that. The 20 to 40, great lens, not for me. It's got a weird too close and not far enough scenario. So I have something else to compensate for that. Either way, if you liked the video, if it helped you at all, like, comment, subscribe. I'll answer everything. <laughs>